going to go from this result, this result here. It's one of the most unassuming things in all of mathematics. It's like, it's like a duh statement. It's like, what is that even, like you differentiate something, can you just get back itself? Believe it or not, we're going to take this and use it to solve two different things. Okay? Number one, this is for differentiating an exponential with a particular base. But the place I started with was with all kinds of different bases. Can I use this to solve this? And the answer is I can. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out how to differentiate not just this exponential, but every single exponential. If I know this thing that I put in a box here, I can do it. And secondly, I'm going to use it to do logs. So this is my... So, here's where we're going to take this first. We're going to look at other bases, return back to this original problem, and try and sort out what's happening with this k business. Like I just said it was a number, but I know nothing about it. Like, this is my fancy way, this is a mathematician's fancy way of saying, I don't actually know anything about this number, but it's a number. Okay. Y equals a to the x. I'm going to pull out some exponential, uh, some index and some log laws on you. You know them pretty well from last year, but it might take a bit of a refresher. Okay. So, here's the first thing I'm going to say. Y equals a to the power of x, but a to the power of x is no use to me. I only know things where it's e to the power of x, right? So what I want to do is turn this guy into something with a base of e, okay? Hmm. Now this is a bit tricky. We haven't done this for quite some time, okay? I'm going to show you what the answer is first, and then let's try and unpack what's going on. This is how I'm going to rephrase it, okay? Now if you haven't been playing around with exponentials or logs for a while, you might think, where did that come from? Okay? I want you to I want to call your mind back to what an exponential is. Okay? Something like this, right? Means I've got something that's growing. Tell me how long it's growing for, right? An amount of time. And I'll tell you, well, how big the size is after such and such amount of time. Okay? That's what an exponential says. When you flip it around and you go to logs, remember LN is just short for log base. E. If I say log base E of S, it's asking the same question but in reverse. It says, based on a certain size that you end up at, how long are you growing for? Okay. Now can you see why this and this are the same thing? Right? Watch. This says you're going to grow for some amount of time. Okay? And then I'll tell you how big you end up. This tells you an amount of time. What amount of time is that? It's the time that you take to grow to that size, right? So this is saying, I'm growing at a size. This means I'm growing for such a time that I'll end up at this size. So therefore the answer is that size. That's just where you end up. Okay? So in a more simple form, this color blue, this is the um, this is the identity that we're taking advantage of. Okay? But in this particular case, I don't just have x. I've got a to the x, okay? So that's why I have done this. Are you okay so far? Are you with me? Yeah? Let's keep moving through. Think now back to your log laws, right? Log laws, log laws. I can do something with this. I can simplify this a little bit, can't I? How can I simplify this instead of having that x up in the power? <coughs> yeah, very good. That power can come out the front and become the coefficient, right? So this is e to the x log a. Are you okay with that? Don't be drunk. Okay. Now this is, well, it doesn't look like it's all that much better, but actually it's a tremendous amount better. Look at this. We're only a stone's throw away from being e to the x itself. So I can use this now. This is really, really good. I just need to make it a little more obvious. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to introduce a substitution. Because what I really have here is a function in the power of something of another function, namely, x log a, okay? We're used to seeing function of a function like this, you know, uh, x plus uh, 37 to the power of 10. There's a function, and it's being raised to a power, function of a function. But exactly the same thing is happening here. It's just different functions involved. So if I let u equal x log a, okay, 
I can use chain rule on this thing, right? Just like I use chain rule on something like this. In fact, we're really good at this, right? <coughs> this is what I've substituted for u. So I'm going to say y is equal to e to the u. And then over here, I need to know, for the chain rule, I'm going to need to know the derivative of this part here, right? Hmm. x log a, that's my function. So what's the derivative? x. It's new g plus oh, okay. oh, Remember what's going on here, right? A is just a number, yeah? And log base e of a number is another number, right? So this is actually just a constant. It's just a constant times x, like 3x or 5x or minus 99x. So all you end up with is log a. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, I'm going to say log a because it's a logarithm. Some people read that as lin a because it's an L and it's an N. Um, I have a friend named Lin, so uh, I don't do that. Either. But <laughs> whatever, I'm saying log and I'm just kind of leaving you off the fact that it's basic. Okay, now we're almost ready. I've got this, I've rephrased it, so now I can say what the derivative is using chain rule, right? It's going to be dy on du times du dx. That's just the standard chain rule that you've been using for months now, right? Okay? This is y as a function of u. What happens when we differentiate that with respect to u? By definition, you just get that same thing handed back to you, just different variables, right? So I've got e to the u hanging out the front. I just established what this is. That's log a. Okay. The last thing that I need to do is get rid of this u business. I introduced it artificially to try and solve the problem, right? So I should really get rid of it and tidy up. e to the u. e to the u. What is e to the u? e to the u. If you have a look at this line here, or this series of lines, rather, e to the u is exactly the same as a to the x, right? It's a straight line through there. So this guy in here is a to the x natural log of a. So you remember how I said before, there's some number, I don't know what it is, but that's the scale factor. Well, you don't need to wonder what the scale factor is. That is the scale factor, okay? And of course, you don't, don't bother writing this, but you can see why it works if you're differentiating e to the x, right? It still fits this, it still fits. It's e to the x log e. But log base e of e is one. So there you go. That's a special case where you're looking at the part where this log term cancels out. What's the significance of this? No, the bottom of this one? This one and regards the part. Okay, so I use this. Where did I use it? I used it right there. See that? At this point I had to differentiate this, but I can't I can't do that unless I've already established and defined this to be the case. Okay? So this is what we observed, this is what I defined, and I used that definition right here when I differentiate in the because u is not a constant, so it's differentiating in respect to u. Yeah, u is a u is a f oh. is a variable, right? <coughs> it's uh, okay. that variable. Okay. <coughs> Make sense? Yes. 